Okay, in this problem, what we're going to do is practice a little bit of decimal multiplication. But after reading the problem, how do we know that it is a multiplication problem? Well, in the problem, it says that Emily brought gas for her car and that the gasoline costs $3.50 per gallon. And it went on to say that she brought 14 gallons. And we got to figure out the total cost of Emily's gas. Well, because it is $3.50 for one gallon, and she's purchasing more than one gallon, it has to be more than $3.50, which means this is a multiplication problem. So what we're going to do is just take $3.50 and multiply that by 14. Now, I could actually do this problem mentally by understanding that 14 is the same thing as 2 times 7. So I could actually double $3.50 first or multiply it by this 2, which is 7, and then take that answer and multiply it by this 7, which would be 49. But let's just go through the standard algorithm just to prove that our answer should be $49. So 4 times 0 is 0, and 4 times 5 is 20. We put a 0 and carry the 2. 4 times 3 is 12, plus 2 more is 14. And then we go on to this one here. But first, we have to put a 0 here. And 1 times 0, 5, 3 is 0, 5, 3. Now we just add these digits up. So this column is 4. This column is 9, 0, and 0. And we have a decimal right here in the problem with two place values after it. So the same thing has to be true for our answer. So our decimal placement is in this position. So after applying the standard algorithm, we can see that Emily would pay $49 for 14 gallons of gas. All right, let's do another example. This problem reads that an airplane travels at a constant speed of 360 miles per hour. How far in miles will the airplane travel in 20 minutes. All right, now this tutorial is to help people who might struggle with a problem like this. Um, however, for many people, this is just mental math. Because the plane is going this far in one hour, and we have to figure out how far it goes in 20 minutes, all we really have to do is take 360 and divide it into three equal parts, which is 120 miles, which is our answer. Well, how could someone do this problem mentally? Well, it should be understood that it takes three groups of 20 minutes to make one hour, which is the same thing as 60 minutes. So if we're breaking an hour into three equal parts, we have to break the distance that the airplane travels into three equal parts, which would be 120. But let's say you don't notice how to do that mentally. What you could do is you could set up a proportion. We can say that the airplane travels 360 miles in one hour. However, I'm going to state one hour in minutes because the problem is asking us to figure out how far the plane goes in 20 minutes. So we have to be consistent with our units. So we're going to see how many miles that is equal to in 20 minutes. Now, one thing that we should notice is that the 60 here gets three times smaller. And if the denominator gets three times smaller, our numerator up here has to get three times smaller. So we could just cover up the zero and pretend this is 36 for a moment and divide 36 by three, which is 12. And then we can just add that zero back that we ignored. So we would say that the airplane traveled 120 miles in 20 minutes. All right, let's do another example. Okay, this problem reads that the price of printing digital photos is $1.80 for nine prints. If David wants to have 48 digital photos printed, what will be the cost? All right, now, one thing that we should notice with the given rate, which is $1.80 for nine prints, is that the number nine does not fit into 48. So this problem is not straightforward. Now, if the price given was for a number of prints that equally fits into 48, we could figure out how many times that number fits into 48 and then multiply that by 180. So we have to use a different approach with this problem. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to take this given rate and convert it into a unit rate. Let's take $1.80 and divide it by 9. And that's going to give us 20 cents. But let's just show the math here so we can verify that it is 20 cents. So we're going to take $1.80 and divide that by 9. And we have a decimal right here, so we have to bring that straight up. And 9 fits into 18 twice. So at the end of 18, we put a 2. Now, technically, this is an 18, but I just say that to make our division a little bit easier. It's really 1.8, so we should be saying that 9 fits into 1.8 two tenths of a time. So now we're going to multiply this by 9, which is 18, and that gives us 0. And we cannot leave this place value blank here, so we just put a 0 on top. So we could say that David is paying 20 cents for each digital print. Well, once you know what the unit rate is, you can take that amount and multiply it by how many prints that we are purchasing. And David is purchasing 48 digital photos at 20 cents per photo. So we can take 20 cents and multiply it by 48. All right, when you multiply this first digit here, if it's a zero, just bring it straight down and then just jump to the next place value and then start multiplying. 2 times 8 is 16, so we put a 6 and we carry the 1. 2 times 4 is 8, plus 1 more is 9. And because we have two place values in total after our decimal in the problem, the same has to be true in our answer. So altogether, David would end up paying $9.60 for 48 photos. All right, let's do another example. All right, it is given in this problem that a bag of seven apples costs $1.75. It is also given that a bag of 25 apples costs $6.25. And we have to determine the cost per apple. So this is a unit rate problem because we are looking at the cost for an individual apple. And when you have to determine the unit rate, you must divide to figure out what that unit rate actually is. But what some people get mixed up on is what number do you divide by? So if you ever get confused as to what number you divide by, find the word per in the problem or the word each, and the unit after that word is what you actually divide by. In this case, apples. So we have to divide by the number of apples. So let's take $1.75 and divide it by 7. So first we have to take this decimal and raise it straight up. Next we divide 7 into 17, which fits in twice. 2 times 7 is 14, and we take that away from 17, which leaves us with 3. Next we bring this 5 down, and we divide 7 into 35, which fits in exactly 5 times. So the cost per apple for seven apples at $1.75 would be 25 cents per apple. All right, let's go ahead and take $6.25 and divide it by 25. All right, so let's take this decimal and bring it straight up and divide 25 into 62. And we can fit that into 62 twice, which gives us 50. And 62 take away 50 is 12. And we bring down this 5. And we divide 25 into 125. And that fits in exactly 5 times. So the unit rate cost for the second bag of apples is also 25 cents per apple. All right, let's do another example. All right, with this problem, it says that Erica can type a rate of 75 words per minute. How many words can she type in 45 minutes? Now, most people, when they read this, would understand right away that this is a simple multiplication problem. Because it says Erica can type 75 words in one minute, and they're being asked how many words would that be in 45 minutes, all we have to do is multiply 75 times 45. So let's go ahead and do that really quick. So we just have to set up our problem and start by multiplying 5 by 
75, which is 375. And then we put a zero here and we multiply four by 75, which is 300. So we add those digits together and we come up with a total of 3,375 words. So this was a unit rate problem because the problem given said that Erica can type 75 words per minute. And what we had to do is use that given rate to figure out what would that be equal to in 45 minutes. So if we were to set up two equivalent rates, which is called a proportion, we would see that the number of minutes got 45 times bigger, which means the number of words would also get 45 times bigger, which gave us a result of 3,375. Although with this problem, we really did not have to set up a proportion. We could have just read the problem and have understood that it is a simple multiplication problem. All right, so we just went over how to solve some more kind of basic word problems involving unit rates. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you can come back and check out the hundreds of math videos that might help you with your math homework.